In the election results project, we're going to read data in from a text file that contains how people voted in the student body elections. There are three offices, one for president, one for vice president, one for secretary. And there are a number of candidates in each one of those. So in the president, there are two candidates, Alex Abernathy and Brooklyn Bianco. Vice presidents are Chris Cortez, Darcy Delaney, and Emery Evans. And the secretary candidates are Pat Peters, Robin Ramirez, Sam Smith, and Tracy Turner. The data exists in a comma delimited text file with the president candidate being listed first, the vice president, and then the third one is the secretary. We want to create a program that will go through this data, read it in from the text file, and populate three different lists of the number of votes for each candidate. So one list will be for president, one for vice president, and one for secretary. And then show the results. We're going to use a string function called split to parse out that data that's being read into those three different lists that we're going to create. Here is a screenshot of our program once it runs. It should show each office, the candidates for each office, and the number of votes they received as read in from that data file. And you can see here uh, the result of the data that is provided to you in Canvas is Alex Abernathy becomes the president, Chris Cortez is the vice president, and the secretary on a very narrow um, margin is Pat Peters, one at 99 votes. Some tips for you, and then the assessment rubric. So notice we're using conditional repetition structures. You need to use a loop and it's by a nested if structure. We're going to use functions. So your program should contain functions and you need to be able to read the data from the text file and process it. I'm going to suggest you pause the video here and try to do this on your own or maybe with a, with a classmate. And if you struggle, then come back and watch my code review for the, in the remainder of this video. Here's the way I coded the election results project. I started with global variables of presidential candidates, pres candidates, VP candidates, and sec candidates. So president, vice president, secretary. I populated those with the names of the candidates. So these are string list. Pres candidates is Alex Abernathy, comma, and Brooklyn Bianco. Notice those are each in quotes. They're literal strings. And the vice presidents, we have Chris Cortez, Darcy Delaney, and Emery Evans. And the secretary candidates, we have Pat Peters, Robin Ramirez, Sam Smith, and Tracy Turner. One of the reasons I did this as a list is so that if we reuse this program next year for the student body elections, I can easily come in and just change those names. Then I have my main function, and I call a method called print overview, and then create results. So the print overview is just simply a method that displays what this program does. In the past, we've hard-coded this at the beginning. Now I'm just using a, a method to do that or a function to do that. Who the project is written by, the name of the project, and what it does. So here then is the function to create the results. We're going to set up a list to tally the results. I have a list called pres votes, and it's going to equal zero for each element times the number of presidential candidates. So this will actually give us, since there's two candidates, would give us a initial value of the list of zero comma zero. Now, why not just hard code that in? I could, but again, if we have a, if we run this again next year and I change the candidates, maybe we have three candidates for president and maybe only two for the vice president and three for the secretary. I wouldn't have to come back and change the hard coding of the elements of these initialized list because in this case they're based on the number of candidates in these lists. So it makes your program a little bit easier to modify for next year and all I have to do is come in and basically change the names. I also have a variable called votes which is going to be the total number of votes. It's going to equal zero. Here's where we're going to read our data from the text file. I need to get that name of the file from the user. So I use an input statement, enter the file name of the new election results file, including extension. And that's going to go into a variable called file name. The advantage here is we might have different results, maybe for different classes of the student body. I can use the same program by just simply loading a different data file. 
if the file name is equal to null, in other words, they didn't put anything in, then I'm going to print that is not a valid file name and return back to the menu. And the reality is I didn't really have a return to a menu here. So this probably should say this is not a valid file name. Otherwise, we're going to open that file that they specified as file name for read purposes. So second parameter here is an R using the open method. And that's going to go into my file. And then we're going to use ballot equals my file dot read line. And we're going to read the first line. And while the length of ballot is greater than five, so as long as the line is more than five characters, we want to do something. This takes care of maybe a blank line at the end of our data file that contains no data and may cause problems with this code trying to parse it out. But we're going to increment votes by one. Our ballot is going to take ballot and we're going to read from zero to the length of ballot minus one, removing that, that carriage return. So that's all that's doing is removing the carriage return at the end because every line has a carriage return at the end of it. You notice in the data file over here, each line is three names, and then there's a non-visible carriage return, the slash n that goes to the next line. We want to get rid of that slash n. Results then equals the ballot without the carriage return, and we're going to split it on the comma. These are all comma delimited. So results then becomes, in essence, a list of three items, because each of these lines have three items. Then we'll use a loop here for i in range of zero to the length of pres candidates. If results element zero, that's gonna be the name of the president they voted for, equals pres candidates element i, then we're gonna increment pres votes element i by one. What this is doing here is it's looking at the names in my pres candidates and if it matches that name, we're going to increment the, item, the same index item in the pres votes. And then I simply do the same thing for the vice president and the same thing for the secretary. And then we're going to read our next line. As long as that next line is greater than five characters, this will keep looping. So we have three nested loops inside our while loop, three nested for loops inside our while loop, and each nested for loop has a nested if structure. Once we've read that data, we want to close our file. We now have our three different list of pres votes, VP votes, and sec votes that are populated with the number of vote candidates. Okay, we want to print out the results. So election results, we want to show the number of ballots cast, and we're going to format that for the number of votes. That's going to go into our placeholder zero. We're going to print the office of president, and then for I in range zero to the length of the number of items in pres candidates, that's going to be two. It's going to go from zero and one. And we're going to print the name of the candidate, pres candidate element I, space, hyphen, space, the number of votes they got, that's going to be pres votes element I, and the word votes. And we'll do the same thing for the vice president, going through the different candidates and the number of votes they got in those two lists, and then the same thing for the secretary. And of course, we need the main statement to make this all run. Let's watch this run. So here's my program running. I get the information that's being shown from the print overview method. I'm asked to enter the file name. You want to store your data file in the same folder as your Python file. So you don't have to do a path, but I could. But the file is election.txt. And there are the votes that were read in from that data file for the different candidates. If you just jumped into this video and haven't seen the prior videos to this, I invite you to check out my Python playlist of videos. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos that I create, you can click my picture up in the top right and subscribe to the channel.